Today, we're weaving Diamond Twill. So let's get started. All right, so today is really going to be for all of you beginners out there who want to learn how to weave Diamond Twill, or maybe you're someone with a little bit more experience, but you want a refresher. First, we're going to talk about the pattern. If you want to grab this pattern completely for free, click the link down in the description box below. On this pattern, I've laid everything out in a way, so once you download it and print it out, all the directions are on it, but I'm going to go through this with you step by step so you can really get a hang of how this works. The first thing you're going to want to know is that you need to warp in groups of eight. Then we're going to add one warp string to make the pattern symmetrical and two more warp strings that will be what I call our floating warp and we'll get into that. So as you can see, this pattern is a grid. The columns of the pattern, so everything going vertically, represents the warp strings and the rows represent our weft string. So that's what we're going to be weaving in. For every white block, that represents our tapestry needle going underneath a warp string and all of the gray blocks, including the ones, the darker gray blocks, represent going over a warp string. This is all going to become much more clear when we actually start weaving, so stick with me here. Now, before I give you just way too much information, we're gonna get started with the weaving so you can get a hold of how this is gonna come together. So you're gonna need 27 warp strings. I'm working on a four ends per inch loom and I have used 88 natural cotton for my warp. I will list all the tools and materials in the description box below. And for the weft, I'm going to be using this super bulky weight yarn. It's applied yarn, it's wool, I absolutely love it. And if you're working on a four ends per inch loom as well, you're going to want something nice and bulky for your weft or the pattern isn't really gonna come through. To keep things really simple, I'm just gonna be weaving a little sample piece of this diamond twill today. So I'm just gonna start with a twining stitch and then start weaving. So I like to work with a maximum of like three arm lengths at a time of my yarn. So I'm gonna grab a piece of that. I'm gonna grab my tapestry needle, which makes weaving twill a whole lot easier. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a twining stitch. All right, so I have my twining stitch in and now I'm ready to start weaving. You can definitely add cardstock at the bottom of your loom, but just for this example, I'm just doing a twining stitch. So we're gonna grab our patterns now. And it's definitely gonna make it easier to have a physical pattern, so make sure you grab this pattern through the link in the description box below. All right, so one of my biggest tips when you're weaving any pattern is to grab another piece of paper so that you can cover up the other rows of your pattern so you don't get lost. Now let's talk about what I call the floating warp. So that's these very far strings on the left and on the right. The reason that I add this for you is that if we didn't have them, we would have some funky stuff going on on the edges of our pieces. So as you can see, the way I've laid it out, you'll be going under, over, under, over, which is what we need when we're weaving around those far warp strings. Now, if we didn't have that, you can see that there's sometimes twice we need to go over the far warp string, twice we need to go under. It's just kind of disrupts the pattern and makes it a little bit confusing for you. So that's why I've added those in there so that you always have something to wrap around. For row one, we're going to cover up all the other rows and we're just gonna work on row one. So let's start, we're going to start with under one, over one, under two, over three, under two, over one, under two, over three, under two, over one, under two, over three, under two, over one, under one. Now, just like with weaving plain weave, we need to make sure that we are leaving ourselves a bit of slack as we weave. So. I'm gonna make sure that it's firm around that string, but not tight. I'm not pulling like this. So we're gonna make sure that that's around there nicely. I'm not bringing in that far warp string. I'm gonna create my little arch. You can give your warp a strum, and then you're gonna beat down. Now for diamond twill, we're not going to be beating down really firmly or you're not going to see the pattern. We need to see the warp strings in order for the pattern in the weft to come through. Now this row, you'll notice a lot of repeats happening. So let's just talk about that. So we're going over three, under two, over one, under two, 
over three, under two, over one, under two, over three, and so on. So you'll start to notice those patterns come through, which makes this a little bit faster. So we're going over three, under two, over one, under two, over three, under two, over one, under two, over three, under two, over one, under two, and over three. So again, creating our arch, making sure we have some slack in there. And then again, I'm not beating down hard at all. So we're really letting those rows stack up on top of each other, but we're not squishing them into each other. So here we have under two, over two, under three, over two, under one, over two, under three, over two, under one, over two, under three, over two, under two. So we can start to see the shapes coming through now. And I'm always checking on those sides, making sure they're not getting pulled in too much. A little bit of drawing is normal, but we just wanna make sure it's not getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So now we can move on to row four, and we're gonna go over one, under two, over two, under one, over two, under three, over two, under one, over two, under three, over two, under one, over two, under two, and over one. So here I feel like this wasn't quite tight enough, so I'm just gonna tighten it up a little bit and then beat that down again. So we're on row five. We're coming from right to left. We're starting with under one, over one, under two, over three, under two, over one, under two, over three, under two, over one, under two, over three, under two, over one, under one. Now something I'm paying attention to is making sure I'm not letting these sides sort of buckle down like that. I'm being really careful to make sure that everything is remaining nice and straight horizontally. So now we're on row six, and hopefully by now you're getting the hang of this. So just always remember, the gray blocks are going over a warp string, the white ones are going under. So we're going over one, under two, over two, under one, over two, under three, over two, under one, over two, under three, over two, under one, over two, under two, and over one. So you can see the diamond is almost formed here. And now I can move to one, two, three, four, five. Now I can move on to row seven. And now we're gonna go a little bit faster. So we're going under two, over two, under three, over two, under one, over two, under three, over two, under one, over two, under three, over two, under two. For row eight, over three, under two, over one, under two, over three, under two, over one, under two, over three, under two, over one, under two, over three. Row nine, and this is the last one we're gonna do together. So we're going under one, over one, under two, over three. Under two, over one, under two, over three. Under two, over one, under two, over three. Under two, over one, under one. So now you can see we have a fully formed diamond and then we have two half diamonds on the sides. Now, if you wanna weave more than what I've laid out for you, once you get to row 14, which is right here, you're gonna go back to row one. And then if you want to weave the whole pattern twice after you reach 14, the second time, you'll just weave row 15 and 16 to finish it off. So as you can see, if we ended on row 14, we're kind of, there's no full diamond here. Those last two rows are just so that we have a fully formed diamond. So I'm moving on to row 10, and I'm just gonna keep on going. So now I've reached row 14 and I kind of want to do at least one more full row of diamonds. So I'm going to move back down to row one. Okay, so I have run out of yarn and it's no big deal at all. So I'm gonna just leave that one. We'll tuck it in later. And I'm going to grab another piece. Now, since I know I'm weaving till row nine and I'm on row four, 
I'm just gonna count out six more widths and that will get me to the end. Then I'm gonna take a little bit of extra because I wanna do a twining at the end. And then what I like to do when I have woven in something starting on going underneath the warp string, what happened here? No, that's right. Is I'm just gonna loop this back around the warp string like this, just so that it gives it a little bit of a cleaner finish. And even though that's kind of an extra loop around, it just, it still looks better to me. So that's how I do it. So now I have three full rows of diamonds. So I'm going to do a row of plain weave and then a twining stitch over that to finish it off. So now I'm gonna grab a little yarn needle and I'm gonna show you how you can tuck in your ends on your diamond twill. Okay, so I've flipped my loom over and now we're going to tuck in the ends. I'm threading my needle and I'm gonna go through this little channel here. See how there's just like this angle here? We're gonna go up through there, so I'm grabbing just the loops on the back. And I'm gonna pull that end through. You don't wanna pull too tight because it's gonna affect what's going on down here. And then I'm gonna flip it over just to see, make sure that I can't really see it. So you can see it just slightly that it's tucked in this area, but because it's all the same color, you can't really tell. So once you have it tucked in, you can carefully trim off that end and make sure you don't cut any of the warp strings and then that one's tucked in. So the same thing with all these other ends. We have quite a few in this same area. So I'm gonna be, I'm going to have to be a little bit strategic with where I tuck them in. So for this one, I'm probably gonna try to go somewhere over here so I can take this one over here. So what I might do is actually go down one loop and then go through these ones here and then I can trim off the end and just keep tucking in all these other ends now this one's a little tricky since we have so much going on in this same area so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it all the way over here and I'm gonna go down this channel. And last but not least, I have this one. And you can see on the front, you can't really tell where all those ends are tucked in. Like there's little spots where you can tell just a little bit, but it's really, it's pretty inconspicuous. If you enjoyed this tutorial, click right here to watch our pattern tutorial playlist.